Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be unboxing and assembling the Sherpa Wheeled Leaf Vacuum. So, I was a bit over enthusiastic putting the box on the bench to start with, I think. So I've popped it on the hop up at the side and we'll just open it out and see what we've got. Okay, the first thing out of the bag, or out of the box, is the bag. So, it must fit on, or oh, that way I think, onto the back of the chute. It's got Sherba machinery written on the side. Right then, secondly, that's the Sherpa collection bag. That's the spare one I ordered with this machine. Um, we've used these before, but I've always hired one in. I've never bought one. I've never purchased one until now. And what happens is these bags, they get wet when you're collecting wet leaves and they become very heavy. So you can bring one back, leave it to dry out in your workshop, your shed, wherever it is, and you can take a spare bag out with you. So that always comes in handy. So we'll put this one down under the bench out the way for now. Right, the next thing out of the bag is the uh, extending hose. Now this enables you to reach into corners and you can suck with this as well as blow. So we'll put that over to there. Right, there's the handle. The throttle cable's already connected, which makes it uh, quite easy to put together, I'm hoping. So now I'm gonna have to lift the main machine out of the box. Well, that's the main machine out of the box. Goodness me, that took some lifting. Right, there's a few other bits and pieces. I'm not sure what that is. It might be a little tub of oil to go into the engine. Got some nuts and bolts in there and some bearings as well by the looks of it. Some metal hardware. A box spanner. I'm not sure what that is. A metal plate of some sort. It's all very well packaged though. The Losin engine manual and the all important Sherpa instructions. Right, I'll have a quick flick through these and I'll come back and we'll see if we can go from there. So then we've got everything out of the box. I've been through all the instructions and I've roughly laid out everything where it needs to go. We've got some guide wheels there. We've got a couple of metal brackets and some nuts and bolts to put the handle together. Essentially, we've got four nuts and bolts and six washers and two metal frames. And that's the assembly complete, really. However, it took a bit of working out <laughs> considering there were so few parts and a bit of head scratching, but I finally cracked it. And I can see there's not really uh, 
clear instructions on where these actual wheels go and I thought they might have gone at the front somewhere to stop this tipping up. I thought they might have gone here at the back under the bag or somewhere along to stop it tipping backwards or save the bag, but they don't. And actually when I found out what they are for, I was quite impressed. Now the wheels, they actually fit on there. They're like little skateboard wheels and they spin round and they fit on there. And the reason they fit on there is if you're coming up against the curb line, a wall or whatever it is, these guide wheels will hold the front of the, the machine away from there and save the machine itself and also the wall. So you're not going to scrape the wheels, the handle, the front or damage anything. So it's a great idea really. And then to put them together, make sure it's on, you get this little bolt that's got a, a built-in axle and we push this through from the bottom. And then there's two washers. Now these washers are more spacers than washers both fit over the top and the reason they fit on there is to lift this wheel up so it will move freely without fouling on the body of the machine and then it's held in place with a simple wing nut on top and tighten that up finger tight really and then that spins freely no bother at all I'll just do this one over on this side again axle through couple of spacers, wing nut on top. That was nice and simple. Now we move round to the handle. Luckily enough, the throttle cable is already attached. So we'll lift the handle up and it fits just on there. Okay, so with that fitting on there, there's some square headed bolts, coach bolts they're called, and there's a little square on the inside. We'll get a close-up photograph of that. And they poke through and they sit tight in there so you don't need any spanner because it's locked in place. So we'll put that through first. I'll put one through, halfway through on this side. So if I, see if I can get this on now without dropping it on, on my toes. I'll right, we'll lift that up. I'm presuming oh, that's gone in handily. I see that was easier than I thought. Push this side through. Right, and that's that. Now, I need to get this. Again, this is the nut, it's a captive nut inside there. We can put this on and turn it. And as we start to turn, Make sure you don't cross thread it. I'll just leave that one as it is. Oh, I've forgotten something, that's why. <laughs> There's a washer that goes on the outside of that nut. I'll do this side and then I'll come around that side and show you from there in a bit more detail. If I do this side, it should be able to hold it up and I won't be struggling so much. Right, that's that side tight, and if I let go, it's held up. <laughs> right, so let's have a look now around at the front. Right, take this off, and I've got a washer somewhere. So the bolt's gone through, you put the washer on there. The washer allows us to screw this on and put on a fair amount of pressure without actually crushing the frame itself. Because the nuts held, the bolt is held captive in the back, we can turn it round, turn it and turn it until it's finger tight and that's solid and it won't move. You have a handy little clip and this little clip you use, put on there and it'll hold the cable. Now, I'm not 100% sure where this clip should go to hold the cable in place. I'm thinking round about here to keep it away, out of the way when you're going along, maybe a little bit up there. We'll see when we put the rest of the bag and the frame on. Now, that's the wheels on the front, handle up on the back, throttles in, throttle cable, that's all done. 
we've got these two pieces to do and the bag to go on. So what we'll do, we'll turn the machine round and we'll show you exactly how the bag fits. Now there's a little circle on there and this lifts up and out of the way. Now if you've got the optional extra of the hose, you can clip the hose into there and that acts as a blowing hose because it's sat the opposite side of the, of the motor. It sucks from the front and blows from the back. And you can sit in there, you can blow leaves into a corner before you pick them up, etc. However, today we're using it with the bag, so we need to clip this down and this lifts up. And that lifts up and out the way. We put the bag on from the top and it slides down. There's a groove either side and it will slide down there. And as it slides down, it presses this switch here. Now that switch controls the engine. If that's not depressed, this will not fire up. So you need to have either the flap down to have it fired up so you can use the hose or you need the bag connected so that's down and it will fire up and you can use the bag. It will not work without either of them. So let's get the bag and see if it fits. So we've got the bag here up on the bench and this is it. And it fits sort of like this, I think. It's got a tough bit of plastic on the bottom to stop it dragging along the floor. Well, it won't stop it dragging along the floor, but it will prevent it rubbing through when it's dragging along the floor, I presume. And a zipped access at the back. Now, from what I can see, the metal frame is supposed to fit in there. So I'm not sure if we put the bag on first or the frame on first. But while we've got everything at this stage, I can show you exactly how the bag fits. So we lift this flap up like before and there's a thin groove down there and down there and the switch in the middle. We pick this up with the handle at the top and we put that down. There are two little guide strips either side if we can see on there. And we put those down and they should fit in and they do and it clicks and that's it. It's now attached. We leave this on top and now we need to build the framework to hold the bag up in position. I think if we've gone as far as we can really with this on the bench and we're working our hands up in the air. So we'll have to put it down on the floor and then we'll take it from there. So now we've got the uh, machine down on the floor. We've just got a couple of these metal brackets to fit. And this is the first one and probably the easiest from what I can see. Now the thing that's got me is we've got one, two, three, four, five holes. And we've got one, two, three, pins so we've got more holes and we've got pins so I'm not 100% sure exactly where this will go but from what I can see in the instructions I'll give it a quick blast and we'll if it's not correct we'll have to jig it around again now that one looks like it goes in the front there and from what I can see from the picture on the box with this frame sticking up in the air and I think that frame is to hold the pipe if you've got the pipe as an extra it can come across the top and just sit on there so that's that then secondly, we've got this frame here and this is the one that the bag hangs off and now it has to fit facing backwards. So the only way it can fit is by going in these sets of holes here. So I'll have to try and squeeze that in and see how it goes. Now, I'm not sure if we're supposed to put the frame on first or the bag on first or which way it goes but anyway. The frames are in, so those two frames are clicked in and they seem to be held nice and secure. And then we'll get the bag <coughs> off the floor. I've disconnected it from the machine, so I'll try and get this on a little bit easier. We've got, if you can see, two holes in there, and this frame sits over those sits inside those holes, sorry. So one sits in there. Pulled the frame, huh? how about that? Not as secure as I thought, is it? And that one fits over there, I hope. Let's see, if we can get it in. It's not the easiest thing to do. Maybe if I take the frame out, I could put that in first. So that fits on. No, still struggling. That's 
So that pulls the frame in. That's better. That's it. That's it. See, it's not all plain sailing. So that's in there. And that clips in over there. So that's that done. Now with the bag on there, there's some little clips on the front. We'll have to get close up of those. And they clip over the metal bar at the front. So we've got the bag securely fastened to the first metal frame. Now, the second part of the assembly of the bag is these little clips. And I'm presuming that they go over the top and fit on there. And that one's easy enough to do, but I don't know about this one. Ah, yeah, that's not so bad. So that's good. And then lastly, we'll just connect the bag back up to the port as we did when we got it on the bench. So that's it. And that's secure, that's secure, that's secure. And I think that's about it for assembly then. So need to have a look at the engine next. I'll take this plastic cover off and uh, fill it up with oil and then see how we get on then. So we've taken the protective plastic off the top and we can see the Lonsin 159cc petrol engine. Now Lonsin have made a name for themselves over the past few years providing engines for garden and industrial machinery. So hopefully this should be nice and reliable. In the UK, none of these engines are ever shipped with oil in. I think they have oil in at the factory, they drain them out, they get to wherever they're going and we have to put oil back in. We don't allow it in our postal system. So, first thing we need to do is actually put some oil in. I'll turn it round, you can see the oil filler cap there and it says on top. We'll take that out. And on the small dipstick, we've got a little serrated edge, and that's the marker, so we bring the oil level up to the top of there. These engines take 0.6 litres, or 600 mils of oil, and as luck would have it, in the box comes 600, 600 millilitres of SAE30, which is straight engine oil for four-stroke engines. Then take this open, I'll just knock a hole in the lid, we we'll use a funnel so we don't spill any. And we we'll just pop that straight in. Now, go nice and steady. Don't overflow the funnel and spill it all over the floor. SAE 30 oil is quite thick. Um, if you're using it, in this country, that's fine to use thicker oil. If you're using it in colder climates, you might need something a little bit thinner. Make sure you get the last few drips out. Put the funnel in your empty oil bottle and we can dispose of that later. Now, put the dipstick in. Bring it out. And it's just to the top of where it needs to be. So I'm happy with that. Might drop a little bit as it works its way around the engine. Now we also need some fuel in here. So we'll turn it round and have a look. This is a fuel cap over here. I'm presuming that's bone dry, which it is. That's bone dry. There's no fuel tap on the line coming down. There's no choke either and there's no primer pump. So I'm assuming it's actually an auto choke petrol engine. I've got a litre of unleaded here, just straight unleaded, and I'll pop some of this in. No funnel required with these little bottles, they're very easy to pour. With the neck being on one side, they don't glug very much once you've got the initial little bit out the top. Now I'm not 100% sure how much this tank holds. We'll see. Because you don't really want to overfill it and spill some on your floor. Right, I would say that that tank holds about 900 mil. There's a little bit left in there and it's come quite up high up the neck. So put that back on. 
Right. So we've got the engine full of oil. We've got the tank full of petrol. Now, need to turn it round. In fact, we'll have a look at it this way. We'll have a look at the starting lever. We'll push that down. And that's all the way down to full throttle. It says fast, slow and stop. So we put it all the way down to fast and we should be able to pull this and start it. However, because it's a brand new engine, the oil's not all the way around and the fuel's not through to the carburetor, I'll just give it a few slow pulls just to get everything circulating and prime it through. Hopefully that should pull some fuel through to where it needs to be. That's it, I heard it start to go then. So that will pull some fuel through to where it needs to be, circulate the oil around the engine, and now hopefully we should pull it. Fingers crossed it starts. Hey presto. Right, that's brilliant. So we've got it on idle now, just ticking over. We'll stop it. And that's everything complete. We've done it. We've filled up the engine with oil, we've put the bag on, we've put the wheels on the front, everything's as it should be, absolutely perfect, I'm happy with that. What we'll do, we'll have a look at this out in the field, we'll test it for a couple of, couple of weeks and see how we get on with it, and I'll be able to come back and do a full review. But you know what, I think I've got some brown paper around, I'm going to throw some on the floor and suck it up just for fun. As you saw, it picked up those fake leaves off the workshop floor absolutely effortlessly. I don't know what it'll be like when they're wet, but we're going to take this machine out, we're going to test it for a few weeks, maybe a month, and we'll do a full product review after. I hope you enjoyed this short video on how to assemble the machine, fill up the engine and get it running. If you've got anything nice to say, then please put it in the comments section below. Give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you can. I'm Jimmy the Mower and I'll catch you on the next one.